Thanks very much, Neve, for the International Women's Day interview for Impeel. I know you've been traveling the world recently, so uh, really, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Judy. Thanks for having me. Um, delighted to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're always such a big supporter of MP. <laughs> so it's easy uh, because you're doing you're doing amazing things, and I'm delighted to be part of your journey as well. And as another female um, founder, um, just so delighted to be able to join you on your journey, Shahini, as well with MP. So thank you for the opportunity today. Looking forward to our conversation. Thanks so much, Neve. Thank you. Um, I'll just tr jump straight into the Q&A, if that's uh, fine with you. Um, don't want to keep you for too long. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Um, so my first question would be, um, I mean, you have done amazing things and your, your accomplishment list just runs so long. Uh, but just some of your biggest accomplishments, what you feel uh, are your biggest ac accomplishments as a woman in your field? What do you, what do you think? So I think accomplishments is, is kind of a tricky word, really, isn't it? But I suppose feeling confident in my achievements in the area that I'm currently in and what I've brought from my other roles and other careers into this role now as Chief Legal and People Officer for Alternative Technology Solutions. Um, I believe, first of all, getting my head around the law has really helped me in this position. So that was like studying, um, you know, contract law intensely, employment law, and then looking at IT law specifically and privacy law has really set me up for, um, number one, being able to take and support and help out how to get through the examinership process, which we did successfully two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to be able to line us up for success with our contracts, with our clients and with our people to make sure that, number one, that our technology and our people are always safe. And number two, that we deliver for our clients under our contracts as well. So I'd say an accomplishment in your current role is making sure that you understand every day the risks. Like I have a risk register with all my reports. It's like, what are there any risks today? How are you feeling? Are you coming into work like with the elbows out like that? We're getting rid of the risks basically every single day. What are the risks? And that, you know, we communicate really effectively in, okay, any risks today? What are we doing to mitigate those risks? Um, so that, that's on the first part. On the people side, um, I'm a huge believer in interpersonal communication. And I went back to study it, as you know, Shahini, um, two years ago in UCC with Tony Humphreys. Um, it changed my life. So during this process, I learned about um, the communication of the self. So with communicating every day in the workplace with the self, what we're able to bring is, you know, this sort of open communication um, and honesty and transparency to the behavior that's preventing um, performance and results. So it's just through this training that's really, really helped me as a leader and, you know, as, you know, a chief legal and people officer is everything from the interview process to getting them in the door and then getting them performing and loving what they're doing um, is all down to number one relationship and number two communication. Yeah. So I, I would, yeah, I would see those two things as really, really important in driving your team forward. That's fantastic, Neve. And for an innovative AI company, um, it's so important. And also tech talent is such a big issue at the moment. So that, both of those you are covering very like the two most important part of your business um, yeah I think for us it's just to have people engaged in becoming change makers and contributing to um you know emerging tech and changing the way things are and I mean you know seeing for dealing with me over the last um nearly 18 months now yeah. is um you know you know you have to be able to change quickly and change fast and you have to be able to make decisions really, really, really quickly. Um, and it, that just comes with being really open and honest with people you're communicating with. Um, and I think if people, you know, if people can come to work every day engaged and happy and bring, you know, some sort of passion to their work because they believe in, in what the company is engaged in doing. I mean, like yourselves, with changing how, you know, people get diagnosed early, what interventions you need from a health perspective with MP. And that's why Altada and Oyster Haven and myself and Alan were so happy to get involved um you know on the, on your last funding round and and of course to follow in and on the journey with you as well because you know it's easy for you to motivate your team to do what you're doing because you're you're saving lives actually um and you know it's sort of like with us being in a position to 
you know, make it easier for people to get approved for a mortgage, you know, make it easier for people to access credit, Shahini, you know, yeah. to bring a bit of quality to, you know, the mortgage world, um, uh, you know, a, a bit of equity never goes, uh, equity and justice is two of the big things that I'm really passionate about. So yeah. for Altada to be in a position to assist with how financial services are operated, operated in, to bring transparency and honesty and integrity to those, those data sets, I'm really really happy to be part of that journey as well um so it kind of really helps when you're trying to set your purpose and your vision and your mission for your company is that you know it's easy to get excited about being a change maker yeah and we absolutely love working with you guys you're just amazing uh so easy to work with and so inspirational so absolutely love our conversation every week um just moving on to the next one then um what do you think of diversity and why do you think it is important in workplace I, I think even the fact that we have to discuss it as a thing, it really, it personally really worries me because yeah. um, it makes, it's so logical. Like, you know, some they say like common sense is not that common. It's so logical that to have diversity of thought, diversity of ideas, um, different cultures even as, as well involved in building out technical solutions and solving problems. It's so logical. It's like, why is it even a thing? It's just, it's just beyond me that we need to even discuss it. It's so obvious. Um, but sometimes, you know, the obvious things are not that obvious, right? Um, to a lot of people. Um, so that's why it's really important to us. And like, you know, in like, say down in, like in our tech team now, we have four female leaders in, in the tech streams, um, which is, it's just so exciting as a mm-hmm. female leader, you know, that it's just, that, you know, men's not all men in technology. There's amazing women. Um, yeah. in very technical roles yeah. um, they just you know maybe they're just less vocal about what they're doing um, and you know I think self-belief is a huge part as well is that I just think there's this difference between the self-belief that a male has and the self-belief that a female has and as you know um, in the last program we had I think it was five we were, we were nearly 50 50 and two of our female um, ladies for heading into uh, the assessor thought that they didn't have enough customer traction and that they weren't ready for the program. Whereas the male counterparts with less customer traction, less uh, less validation even of the problem, were like, yeah, we're ready. We're absolutely 100% ready. I was dumbfounded. I was literally talking these ladies down from a kiss saying, you are ready. Like, you are ready. You, you, you're, you, you know, you've done your market research. You know what problem you're solving. And you are, like, you are what people are going to invest in. Not that like I'm not ready yet. Um, so I think, and I think I'm mom of three and I have one son. So I feel that, you know, it comes, it starts at that young age of like, you can do anything that you want to do. You can, you know, you can lead, you're well able, take the risk, get out there and literally just do it. Um, to use Nike's phrase. So I think that diversity is usually important. And I think that, you know, okay, so maybe we do need to speak about coming out of, we're still not out of it. I mean, like Forbes is starting to talk about now more and more millions of people that have died from COVID. Like whether or not that it's just a little bit of a distraction as to what's happening in Ukraine at the moment, Shahini, Mm -hmm. where we've got war every single day um, and many, many wars and not just the war in Ukraine. Um, But it's sort of like, you know, as a mom of three, it's sort of like just letting my girls know that they can do whatever they want to do. Um, and that there's no barriers to what to what they can do. I think it's usually important. Um, and just back to my point, um, you know, during the pandemic, lots of women had to take a step down in terms of they were at home, there was care needed, there was elderly parents, there were sick parents. And unfortunately, you know, people were saying that it was going to become a she a, a she session, like another recession, but not a full recession. Yeah. Only a recession, only a recession for females for really. And that was the concern. And like we're seeing it now with, you know, lots of talent coming through the pipeline, usually experienced women um, mm-hmm. that did take a step back because of the juggling. And, you know, just that kind of, you know, the mental load, I call it. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, when you're in a league, an equal, equal relationship, you know, the female shouldn't carry all the mental load of disappointment, the teeth appointment, you know, the dog, the collection. It, it literally has to be. So it starts, it starts at home, not in the workplace. If it was equal at home, if, if there was equality at home, there would be no need for equality in the workplace because the woman wouldn't have to sacrifice her career because she's not supported in her life. And if she doesn't get that support, 
um, in her home life, whether it be male or female, um, she needs to get it elsewhere, you know, from a support network, resourcing, out, outsourcing, I call it. I, you have to, I have to outsource lots of activities, um, lots of things in my home, lots of things. I choose to do that. That's my choice. Yeah. You know, you know, is my house, you know, the tidiest house in Cork? No, it's not. That's my choice. That's my choice. Um, you know, and I have an amazing team around me that know that these are the things that I have to outsource to be able to have more quality time on the other side with my children and my family. So that when we travel, that we can, you know, enjoy things. What message would you give out to young women who are starting out their careers today uh, on this International Women's Day? Well, I, I, yeah, I think self-belief is the first thing, is just to believe in yourself. I mean, it's like I've said this so, so many times, but if you don't see yourself, and I said this the very first address in the, the new cohort uh, in Alcester with Tangent last week, Shahini, I said, if you don't see yourself, nobody else will see you. And you would have heard those words last year when you, when you started off as well. And I, I think that it's something that it just, it just sits with you, right? Isn't it so true? If you don't see yourself, who else is going to see you? Nobody is going to make it. It starts with that. Yes. And if you're a founder and you've got a great business idea, my other my other thing, and I plagiarize this, I think um it's this isn't my own, but nobody really cares about your startup of your idea till you build it. So you have to be resourceful enough to build something, however awful it looks. (laughs) And you have to have, you know, a team with you on that journey. Um, nobody cares because loads more people have the same idea as you what they care about is that is my money safe with you have you got resilience to keep going at any cost and and if you do you're investable and the last thing is you have to be coachable if you are not coachable forget it forget it there is no hope for you if you if you're not coachable Um, and you can't personalize feedback or criticism it's not about you it's about your product your business your journey and it's about people giving you their money um, they're investing in you. Um, yes, you might have an okay product that's going to get better, but they're investing in you. Uh, so that means you have to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, trust yourself, um, and see yourself, believe in yourself. That's, that's brilliant. my words of wisdom. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, like, it's not a journey for the faint hearted if you're starting on the entrepreneurial journey. And it's actually absolutely you have not. To have a very thick skin um to actually take on yeah. this feedback and actually that that's what I, absolutely we have done like i applied for csf uh when i knew that i won't even get it because i just wanted the feedback you know they're all yeah. get through feedback, the process but they're good yeah. feedback. i mean I, yeah. in my opinion i always say that if it's a good feedback just ignore it but look at your negative feedback because that's very, yeah. very important. Shahini, if I listen to all the negative feedback that I had since I started, in, since I was 21 in business, right? Yes. Um, I wouldn't be here today, okay? Uh, I mean, I remember like doing one pitch um, where somebody said to me, uh, and it was male, by the way. No, like, okay, I'm not generalizing, <laughs> but it was a man. And uh, he said to me like, I don't mean to rain on your parade now, but I just don't get it. Now, if I wasn't resilient and I, you know, wasn't made a bit more steel than that, that could have, uh, that could have been like, take off my, my uh, startup boots there and never, never get out again. To, to finish on that point is like, um, you know, people, are, it's great to take advice um, from people that have walked the journey before you and, you know, you're standing on the shoulders of giants because they have done it. And, you know, Like similarly, when you're applying for, as you said now, like the different, you know, the different programs and whether you're going to get on it or not. Sometimes it's a numbers game. You know, you can't personalize why you didn't get it. Like, for example, you were saying with the CSF, you know, and did you go on to get a training and how far, how was your experience then? Yes. No, I got it. How many times did you apply? Because we got eight PSU before that. By the time we got CSF, our valuation was much higher. So we didn't take that. Exactly. But you, you went through the experience and yeah, yeah, and learned a lot from it because, you know, maybe you tick seven of the boxes, but you don't tick the last box. You know, you have to take the feedback to tick the last box. Right. Exactly. And so it's having the resilience to go, okay, I didn't get it this time. But if you give up at every, every bit of rejection, sure. You're never going to make it right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. And I think that's just, you know, having that kind of belief in yourself as to what you're going to do and 
look, if it's not this startup, it's going to be another startup. I mean, I, I like, I was, I think I'm on my, this is my fourth full-time career out of startups. So the last question um, today is because the theme of this year's International Women's Day is gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. Um, what would you say has been your contribution to that uh, uh, that idea? Well, I guess with Alcessor, with Tangent, you know, we were saying, you know, is this, you know, positive discrimination to keep 50% of our places for women? Yes, it could be seen in EU law to be positive discrimination, um, but we have done it. Um, you know, this year we have four, we wanted more, um, but again, the self-belief wasn't there for, to get the, the other two over the line. We have 11 companies this year, so we're really, really proud of that. Um, and then in our own company, we're now at 37% um, female across the whole organization, Jeannie. You know, and in a tech organization, like that's no mean, no, no mean feast. Um, we are pushing for the 50% mark for um, the middle of Q2. Um, we have a pipeline, talent pipeline that shows that we are going to reach it. But we are 50% um, across our C-suite. So we have 50% leadership um, for female, um, which, which is something that we're really, really proud of as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, every female um, leader needs to do more. And that's just being open to, you know, people that reach out, people that want to go for a coffee and have a chat with you. Um, but again, there needs to be more reach out, more people saying, I, can I have, you know, some of your time? Mm -hmm. um and for for people and joining networks and I think as well like it's not it doesn't come naturally to females as much as people would think that you know okay great if we're in our own circle and we're having a natural shahini and brilliant but when you actually have to intentionally go out there and network and ask for help it's not easy no it's not easy but you know what the more you do it it gets easier um but you, you know you have to be it's like you know what they say fortune favors the brave like what have you got to lose you just yeah. ask for help, ask for support. Um, so yeah, that would be, um, and then I think a pretty big contribution is I am lucky enough to have three daughters. So I'll have three more powerhouses coming up the rank. Uh, so, so watch out, I would say for those three girls because they are running rings around us. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited. we will be very excited to be part of their journey as well, Shahini, um, yeah. and driving that difference through as well. Brilliant, fantastic. That, thank you so much, Neve. Uh, that was really uh, very, very insightful as always. I always find our conversation very useful and insightful, but also it was very entertaining because uh, you, you gave so many anecdotes and you have a very different view towards it. And uh, it, it was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rahili, and happy International Women's Day. Thanks very much, Neve. Thank you.